Hi, hello everyone. Um, thanks for joining us for this talk today. Um, well, looks like a lot of people have already left for the reception and the beer, maybe. Uh, just a few minutes more for you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us. So I'm Laurent from Pixie Software. Um, I'm Olivier Gignot from Pixie Software as well. So yeah, thanks again for joining us. Um, we are about to talk a little about how Unity and uh, Pixies can be used together to, uh, to create nice AAC um, real-time applications um, yeah, using yeah, Unity and Pixies. Um, so first, maybe a little introduction regarding Pixies. Um, so what, what are we? Um, we are um, a small company based in France. Uh, we have around uh, 15 people working at Pixies. And we are developing a set of tools and applications, software, all dedicated to CAD data preparation and optimization. So by CAD, I mean any kind of, of data coming from the industry, uh, software like Gatia, uh, Siemens, SolidWorks, and of course the AEC solutions like Revit mainly. Um, why did we start to develop such solutions? Um, actually, at the beginning, Pixies, maybe some of you get um, more information this morning uh, during the audio talks, but uh, um, yeah, we started the development of Pixies uh, inside a small uh, French agency um, that has to deal with CAD assets all the time, every day, to create applications, real-time applications for their customers. Um, so that's where we started to work on algorithms, features, and processes to enhance the way we are dealing with all this um, complex data and how to use them in real-time applications. Um, so this is uh, a representation of um, how to, to import AEC data, so CAD data in general, but that's also true for AEC market and industry, uh, how to import your data into Unity uh, if you don't have Pixies. Uh, so, first, uh, so first thing, it's painful. Um, you need to have a CAD solution. So either Revit, Katia, SolidWorks. So you need to work with this kind of solutions to create the content at the very beginning. Uh, first step, then you need to export the data. From these tools, you need to find a file format or something where you can get the data out of the, uh, out of the platform. It could be a native format like IFC, Revit, or you can go through FBX. Uh, then you need to use a third party solution um, to do the, the cleanup and preparation steps. This step is very painful. Uh, it costs a lot of time and effort. Most of the time is being done manually. And uh, tools which is very often used is uh, 3ds Max from Autodesk. Then you need to go through the FBX again, so exporting again from Max, uh, before you can finally get your, uh, your data into Unity. Uh, by going over this workflow, uh, you have to do a lot of manual operation. You have different steps. Uh, you go to, through different software, so that brings licenses, additional licenses costs. Um, and you also have um, the risk to lose a lot of data and information during the process, especially due to the SBX file format where you may lose a lot of metadata, sort of engineering information that can be contained into the CAD and that you won't retrieve into Unity. Um, so that's before Pixies. Um, uh, so we were struggling with this workflow all the time already back then uh, in the agency. So that's why once we created Pixies, we decided to use the technology available to uh, create a plugin for Unity. So the plugin had to be something very easy to use. And uh, the only goal was to unlock the CAD import in directly into Unity without all this various steps uh, that can be painful and um, time, uh, non-time efficient. So the first generation of the Pixies plugin uh, was released three years ago, um, st tr uh, still using Pixies. The, the main target was to create a CAD importer for Unity. So just bring your data into Unity, at least the geometry. Um, and then over the, the months, uh, we get a lot of feedbacks from our customers. Um, they, these people say, oh, it would be great to have these functionalities, or we would like to retrieve these features inside Unity. So we start adding new stuff into the plugin. Um, so at the beginning of 2018, that was uh, basically the picture of the Pixies plugin for Unity. Uh, you have a fully integrated importer, 
it comes as a prefab, or sorry, um, a Unity package ready for use in Unity. You have a very extended CAD format compatibility, so you can load any kind of, uh, of file formats directly into Unity, which was one of the major limitations of the engine back then. Uh, you can use all Pixis technology to do optimization and preparation of your CAD model. That means tessellation, polygon reduction, UV creation directly from Unity. Um, it also unlocks the ability to import CAD files, 3D models at runtime within your built uh, applications. Um, and few other very interesting stuff. Um, thanks to this plugin also, we started discussions with Unity. Uh, we, uh, we started to work with them, with their teams, to learn more about the engine, learn more on how we could take benefit from all the, uh, the features available in Unity and how we could help Unity users with our plugins. So thanks to all these feedbacks and the work around the plugin, um, we have created a new version of this plugin um, in August and a new again here in November for the end of this year that Olivier here will, uh, will present to you later. Uh, thanks to these discussions, finally, we, um, we announced a partnership, a strategic partnership with Unity. Um, so both Pixies and Unity now can be used together to create very cool experiences using CAD models without any uh, effort. So now I'm going to let Olivier present you the 2018.3 version of the Pixies plugin for Unity. Uh, we will go over the, all the features of the Pixies plugin and all the new um, capabilities that are coming very soon, very soon. Thank you, Laurent. So this plugin was really appreciated by uh, the users. With the version 2018.2, we also uh, added the support for metadata, as well as big improvements in um, import times. And then with the version 2018.3, which is about to be released uh, in November, we have added a lot, a lot of new features as well as improvements. So I'm going to go through some of the major new features in this version. So the first, first one is preset serialization. So that means that the preset you will use, so the import settings you will use to import your data, you can save it to your project folder so that it can be shared, uh, packed, and reused at any time. So before that, we were using editor preference, but this is much more convenient. Also, uh, as the Unity plugin is available in runtime mode, this is a, a really cool feature because you can use the CRL as asset inside, the, inside your runtime application. Also, uh, by, uh, based on user feedback, we also added the plugin preferences. So that just means that uh, some of the parameters that were hard-coded are now available in the plugin preferences, as well as uh, some other options from uh, the new features I'm going to show you. Also, about the performances. So in the latest version, uh, the 2019.2, which was released uh, this summer, we improved a lot the performances, and we continued in that path. With this version, we have no um, quite good improvements on top of the previous ones. So numbers are not very linear, but to give you an idea, for example, on an IFC model with 1.5 million polygons and uh, 23,000 parts, uh, we now import the file two times faster. And uh, on a Pixis format, so Pixis format is our, our own uh, Pixis um, file format, data preparation format. Uh, we go six times faster for a non-million polygons uh, model with uh, more than 100,000 parts. So to give you an idea, this uh, last model with uh, nine million polygons gets imported in Unity in less than 10 seconds, like on a very standard machine. So that is really fast. So now we have also added uh, some staging and optimization tools. So on top of the import feature, so the, which is the base feature of what we do at Pixies, we also added staging and optimization tools inside the plugin. Why? Because uh, most of the time, what we want to do is not only import the model with uh, as many information as you can, metadata, uh, complete hierarchy, 
but you'd like also to do some automatic uh, material switching, for example, or like replacing uh, some parts, uh, for example, if I take Revit, replacing the trees in Revit with a, a prefab you already have to have something that looks nice and uh, that you can uh, integrate uh, if, yeah, uh, quickly inside the runtime application. So for that, we have added uh, a, a real engine, which you can show, uh, you can see on the right uh, screenshot of it, but I'm going to, to go through that uh, after more in the detail with Laurent, as well as a toolbox, which is um, a more manual way of uh, processing your data after it has been imported with the plugin. So we also added in the import options a support for the new render pipeline. So that means that if you specify uh, what shader you want to use, it's going to use the shader. So that means when you import the uh, IEC data, when it's going to recreate the materials containing within uh, your IEC file, let's say you have, um, you have concrete, so you have some textures inside your IEC, and when you import that, you may want to use a special shader inside Unity and not the standard one. So you can override the shader, but if you are using HDRP or any other scriptable uh, render pipeline, you may want to use the default shader. So if you leave it blank, it's going to use the default shader. So this way you don't have a pink uh, geometries and it just work fine, works fine. Finally, in this version, we completely changed the API. So as some of you may know, we had an API so that you can use the plugin not only in a GUI fashion, but you can use the plugin uh, directly from code. This is really useful, for example, if you're developing a runtime application. So you, you, you may uh, uh, enable the importation of assets during a, your runtime application. So we completely improved uh, in all aspects the API. There is no more features. It's uh, easier to, to use. You can run uh, asynchronous as well as synchronous jobs. Uh, So now I'm going to show you a quick demo of the plugin. <coughs> so first you have to download it from the website. So here's the Pixies website. You can find all of our products as well as some documents. You can download Tari licenses. So the Pixies plugin for Unity is in a classic asset package. So you just have to import your asset package you just downloaded and that's it. So when it has been imported, as you can see now in the project folder, you will see in plugins the Pixies data. And you will also find in the toolbar on the top the Pixies uh, menu. So you can import a model, you can create some import settings, you can access uh, the staging tools, but I'm going to talk more about that later. You can access uh, documentation, licensing, uh, that's it. So now let's just import a file, see how it goes. So you just click in the Pixies toolbar, import model, and you will get this window. So here are all the files supported by Pixies, the Pixies plugin for Unity. As you can see, we have IFC, we have Revit, uh, drawings, DWG, SketchUp files, alias files. So in this case, I'm going to import an IFC file just to show you how it works. So I have this uh, res residential uh, model. As you can see, this is uh, the preset, the import settings, which has information about all of the settings. So you can save it inside your Unity folder if you want to reuse it afterwards. So there it is. And so you have a bunch of settings. You can change uh, the scale. You can change uh, how the behavior with the axis. You can also do some processing on the hierarchy. This is really useful because if you leave it blank, it's going to import the whole hierarchy 
exploits in Revit or any other CAD software. But you can also do some optimization, for example, if you want to merge the three. Uh, you can also create some LODs. So this is a, a really powerful tool. Actually, it's going to use the tessellation from, uh, from uh, Pixie's algorithms. So it's uh, even more, and uh, the quality is even better that if you're using like uh, third party solution, other solutions that are using directly decimation, they are working directly on the mesh itself. Or you can just decide to not use LODs and show the different quality. You can map UVs automatically. So this is really hip. Uh, a really nice feature for uh, IEC. You can also, for example, uh, try to orient faces consistently. But this feature is actually using some of the Pixies algorithms. So it's, it's trying to, to get a uniform normals, uh, flip some faces, stitch patches together. And then the, uh, the feature for, with the shader. Then you can also save uh, the asset you imported as a prefab. And you can also use uh, a staging tool, for example, the rule engine here, where you can link uh, uh, a rule set you have made. So, okay. This usually, for this model, it takes about five seconds. I'm just speeding, the, speeding this up. So, here it is. So, as you can see, we have everything as it is in Revit, even the, the trees. In the hierarchy, you will find everything. Because uh, in this case, we haven't done any processing on the tree, but you will find everything. So that might be really help, uh, a really, really nice thing if you want to do, uh, for example, a, a VR experience when you, where you have to, to interact with particular items. But if you want maximum performances, you may want to, to match that. So in the inspector, you can also see that we keep all of the metadata from the IFC file. So this is true not only for IFC, but uh, if you're importing uh, AutoCAD drawing or ICATIA or anything, you will find metadata such as, I don't know, the weight. It depends on what the engineers uh, put in the metadata, but you will find everything back inside Unity. So this is a very cool feature also if you want to do some actions based on the metadata. For example, finding all of these trees uh, might, you, can, you can, for example, do a search where you are looking for all objects that have a metadata that contains a tree, for example. Oh, too soon. Thanks, Olivier. Uh, so that's a pretty cool way to now import your CAD models uh, directly into Unity. Um, so instead of having to go through third-party tools and everything, just use Unity, the plugin, and get your data ready for use in Unity, um, plus with some metadata information and a lot of cool stuff that you can directly create during the import phase. Uh, what you saw here with Olivier is actually the previous version of the Pixies plugin for Unity. Um, and based on uh, a lot of customer feedbacks we get on this, uh, on this version, and thanks also to the Unity community, we decided to add new and more advanced features into the plugin for the next release. Um, so here are some of them. Um, the first one is the, the toolbox. So what's the toolbox? Um, actually, uh, one of the major issue we had uh, and our users had into the first version of the plugin was um, that once you had imported your model into Unity, it was like frozen. Uh, you have your model, it's imported, but you cannot go back. You cannot retessellate an object. You cannot change the tessellation quality. Um, Olivier show you, the, um, show you the, the chair. You cannot merge the chair afterwards. Uh, so that was one of the major complaints about the plugin. Uh, so we had integrated into Pixies uh, 2018.3 the ability to call Pixies core technology embedded into Unity directly from the editor after the import. So you can now import your model, choose some default settings, and then once you are creating your experience and you want to change, update some stuff, you will have the ability to use the toolbox so a contextual menu that can be applied on a selection directly from the viewer, for example. And you will have the ability to call Pixies and apply data preparation stuff. You will find decimation, which is uh, polygon reduction. 
Uh, you will have the ability to merge objects together um, and a lot of cool features that are now available into Unity for live updating to your editor. Uh, the other cool new feature is the rule engine. Um, we realize that people are now looking to, now that the, um, the barrier of importing CAT files into Unity um, has been broken, people want now to save time in the data preparation process. So uh, you saw a model earlier with a building. It's a CAD model, and CAD models always have very basic colors and materials supplied. When you are in Unity, thanks to the performances of the viewer and the engine, you want, you want more. You want something that looks realistic. Um, so you have to update the materials information. The rule engine might help you do that by automatically apply rules on your model uh, during the import phases. And yeah, automatically assign the materials for you, automatically look for some specific objects based on properties and rules you have uh, predefined. Um, so it's, it has been integrated into the plugin as something very spin, uh, simple. You have a visual approach, so you can create your rules with uh, this kind of visual GUI, and you can define the property names, the values you want to look for, and the actions you want to apply on the selected objects. So now Olivier is going to show you a video uh, that illustrates uh, these two new cool features. Yeah, so you are going to see what it what it looks like and maybe understand what it can do. So first I will start with the toolbox. So here I have a, a kind of a bigger model where I have, for example, this table has been imported with all the subparts. But um, maybe for my, my case, I want the table to be in only one part. So what I can do is access the toolbox where I right click in the hierarchy as you can see, there are multiple things you can do with it, uh, like filtering, but you can also, in this case, merge. So here I'm accessing it through the scene view and the table has been merged. So that is one example of what you can do with the, the, the toolbox. Here's a second one. So let's say you have one asset in your scene which has a polygon which is too high. It's uh, sl slowing down your app. So what you want to do is uh, do a polygon reduction of that asset. So here I'm using the decimate, which is a polygon reduction. So I just, I just done a right click on it. I select the quality and then it's done. So all of those tools you see in the toolbox, you can actually use them in the rule engine, so that you don't have to use it to use it uh, directly in the scene view through a right click. Or you can use it directly at import time with filters and actions. So here I'm creating in the project a new rule. So just to show you, here I'm creating a rule. I will rename this. So let's say rule A. And then I will start with selecting all of my game objects and then filtering on a particular criteria. So let's say I want to filter on a metadata property. So if I want to do the same as I did with the table, but in an automatic fashion, I'm going to add a filter on the properties and say, okay, I want to find all the tables that have a metadata which the reference contains table and then I want to merge them with their children. So what it's going to do, unlike what I did with the toolbox on a one asset, it's going to do that for all the tables in my, uh, my scene. You can build many rules, as many as you want. On a more real scenario, realistic scenario, here I'm using the same asset, so a residential asset, and I'm going to use uh, a set of rules I've already made in advance. So I'm going to show you what those rules look like. So here, the first blocks are setting the material based on the metadata. So parquet, uh, roof material. Then I'm also switching the materials, the remaining materials based on their names. 
Here I'm using substance materials, substance source. Then, for example, the revit trees we saw, I may want to replace them with a prefab. So here I'm using a prefab from the asset store, and I'm filtering on all game objects that contains Aspen. And then I'm just like adding a small randomization on the transform so that my trees doesn't look the same. So now I'm importing my file. So this one takes a couple of seconds. And boom. So here I have my asset with all the lights, the trees, uh, everything. It even has been uh, merged, so I have no colliders. And uh, this could even be, you can even uh, plug uh, via headset and uh, walk inside. So here's a quick comparison with the same asset imported without the wool engine. So as you can see, we have on the left the raw materials and the raw trees from Revit. So all the information has been kept from Revit, but it's not so realistic. There is still a work to be done, and the real engine have done that job automatically. So no, a bit of fun part. For example, I said I added some colliders inside. So, <laughs> for example, with those fields, as you can see, this one is already ready for any experience you want to do. Like if you want to do a giant ballpark or <laughs> a VR simulation, you can do it uh, without any additional work. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison. So the picture on the left is a picture taken from Revit. The picture in the middle is the same asset imported in Unity. And the picture on the right is the same asset, same asset imported with Unity with the real engine. So with the real engine, you can go directly from the left picture to the right picture in yeah, less than a minute. It depends on what model you have. But this, for this one, it took only about 30 seconds. So now I want to talk about a whole new feature we just added. So I haven't talked about uh, before, but this one is called the live sync. So what it means, it means that you can now import uh, any file. So let's say a Revit file. And you tick the prefab in the import settings. What it's going to do, you will be able to refresh your prefab every time your file gets updated. So it's a kind of how it works with uh, Blender files or FBX files natively in Unity accepted that it doesn't have to be in your project folder. So you can have uh, your Revit file on a network drive, for example, and you are working on Unity, and someone updates the model, and the model gets updated with the real engine inside your scene. So I'm going to show you uh, another demo with Revit and that same asset. So here I'm importing my model, and I say, OK, I want to create a prefab with the live sync. So it's in the bottom, right there. I'm going to use the same rules I used, and I import my file like I did. So for now, it's the same as I did just before, except that I have my prefab here in my project folder. And as you can see, there is a red icon on the prefab, which means that the file is up to date. It's a up to date. So here's the path to my file. So here are the, the settings I used and the rules I used. So I'm going to revit. I'm going to change a bit the file. So moving some stuff, removing some stuff, duplicating. Uh, items. So those furnitures, I'm going to translate them, rotate them. Okay, so this table, for example. Let's also duplicate that light so that you can see that the rule engine will also add a new light. And finally, let's remove some trees. 
OK, so now I'm just going to save that. And I will just go back to Unity. So when you go back to Unity, it's going to reprocess, as it does with FBX or Blender files. And as you can see, the file got updated. We have the, the new light on the right. The trees are now deleted. The, file, the tables has been uh, rotated and everything. So that's it for the live sync. Now, uh, if the plugin doesn't do uh, what you want, for example, if you want to have uh, bigger capabilities, you may want to look at uh, other solutions we provide. And for that, I will leave this to Laurent. Thanks, Olivier. So hope you like the new features introduced by, uh, by Olivier over the past few months. Uh, it should really help the Unity developers to bring their CAD models into Unity faster and in a smarter way, uh, and should save you a lot of time and effort by, for the preparation of your assets. And it works quite well for the AEC market and prepare, data preparation, as you can see with the light automatic creation and everything. Uh, so we made all our samples on medium assets. It was a building. It's not a big complex like a train station or something like that. Um, the plugin, though, have some limitations uh, that might occur in terms of handling the bigger assets and um, very huge CAD models. So if, for any reason, you have issues in terms of performances, please have a look at the, the other software we are developing. These are standalone solutions, so not directly integrated and embedded into Unity. Uh, they can be used um, separately, but they will have the ability to process and handle very bigger files, and maybe with even more complex uh, data preparation scenarios. Thanks for joining this talk. Um, I hope you learned a lot of things and you like the new plugin. Um, the 2018.3 version of the plugin will be available in November this year, so a few weeks from now. Um, feel free to give it, give it a try uh, from our website. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. I think we have some time left for some questions and answers, so feel free to ask us. Um, if not, we are in the expo floor. Uh, I think not tonight, but tomorrow we'll be back, and, or tonight around a beer. Feel free to grab some of us. I yeah. don't know about that. Where is the? I think you have to move on. Uh, oh, you have to behind. Hi. Um, for purposes of of uh, modularity of automation, on the import process with the rule sets, is it possible to apply on a single import? more than one set of rules. I understand that you can have as many rules as you want in one set, or can a rule set invoke another rule set asset? So in other words, could we have, for example, a standard set of rules based on uh, a set of office furniture models that are common to all our projects, that we've got those rules all set up the way we want, but maybe there are some custom rules that apply to a particular customer's projects that we would apply both of those when importing. Is that? a thing, or is that a future feature in, in now, or what? What you can do with the rule engine as well as with the toolbox, you can, uh, in the Pixies menu, you'd have uh, an option, add a new action. So when you click that, you will have a new script made. It's really simple. In fact, it's a, a template that you can use to add your own action. And this action is going to appear in the toolbox as well as in, in the rule engine. As the rule engine API is open, you can create an uh, action that says uh, run another rule. So this way, you can just create a, a rule that dispatches uh, stuff to so other it, rules. It's an extra click, but it can be automated then. Yeah. OK, great. It's a, it's a brand new feature. so. We might have to, to maybe add some documentation on it. And if you have any feedback like this one, it's a very interesting use case. Yeah. We might not have been thinking about this one. So feel free to get us a lot of feedbacks about uh, this plugin. And if it's interesting features, we'll, of course, add them to the roadmap. A couple of questions. Uh, can you handle point clouds? No, you can't in the plugin. But 
uh, you can in studio and other solutions we have, such as review. But uh, we plan to add uh, the point clouds inside the plugin as well. Okay. But for now, it's not, uh, it's not the case. Yeah, for, for now, it's more due to the, the Unity rendering engine uh, that has, may have trouble to render point clouds. Uh, so it's not linked to Pixies directly. But we are working on like remeshing point clouds uh, uh, using Pixies core technology. Not ready yet, unfortunately. And I didn't see pricing on the website. Can you address pricing for plugins and the others? Uh, yeah, the Pixies plugin for Unity is available for 1,000 euros per year uh, for no-doc licenses, so uh, one computer. Uh, we can offer different kind of licenses, offline, uh, floating, subscription, permanent, whatever you mean, whatever you want. So. For the live update, um, does that have to be on disk, or can it be from like a URL API, like when you update a, a file? It's a good question. Actually, we added that a couple of weeks ago. So we tried it, uh, we tested it on drives for now, as well as network drives, but we haven't tested it yet on remote, I don't know, like uh, yeah. distant server or whatever. But that's um, something we would be looking into. Okay, so. thank you. So once things have been imported uh, and processed by the rule sets, do you track the object that you were imported that you have imported by something like a GUI ID within Unity, uh, so that as long as I don't go absolutely crazy with changing the hierarchy, could I have procedural content that after the import moves things around, uh, populates in some clutter objects, perhaps um, the use case I have in mind here is where the uh, the Revit file or equivalent has office furniture in a cube farm that is empty, and then I have procedural tools that know how to place telephones and monitors and things like that. I don't want the person creating the upstream content for me to have to deal with all those little clutter objects when I can do it so easily in Unity with off-the-shelf tooling. If I added those objects into the hierarchy and then the live sync does an update, will it gracefully handle the fact that, that I haven't changed your objects, but I've added child objects underneath some of them? Will it handle that? For now, it won't. For now, the live update will um, update the whole, the whole object, but if you have added uh, items inside, it's not going to appear anymore. But uh, with the addition recently of the nested prefab and such, we have planned also to look into having uh, something that can be updated, but with uh, keeping the what you have done actually inside Unity on it. So I think it would be possible, but with the nested prefabs. But it, actually, it's something that can get really complex. So I can give you a yes and no answer yet. Uh, I think we might be able to. So if you need the Pixie Studio for um higher density models, are, are you also going to need the plugin for the extra options that it gives you in, inside of Unity, or can you get by with one without the other? Uh, that's your choice, actually. Um, both are completely separate. So if you have the plugin, you don't need Studio. And if you have Studio, you can export an FBX model out of it. So you might don't need the plugin, but you will lose uh, the rule engine, the toolbox, the ability to uh, do live sync. So it's not mandatory just your choice of what you want to do. But if the data preparation is um, correctly done in studio, you might uh, get rid of the plugin, yeah. Thanks. And I think we are good on the timing, so if there is no more questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good evening.